up and good morning guys welcome back to another video we got us a few things going on today but first let's take a look at the completed columns over there on the front of the main house looking absolutely killer second you may notice we got the trailer hooked up to the crew cab OBS which we all know is not my favorite towing combo but you gotta work with what you got so the crew cab OBS is the tow rig today and it's even sketchier today because as we all know um, number one this thing doesn't like pulling a ton of weight but it doesn't like stopping a ton of weight either and albeit my trailer does have trailer brakes but the trailer brake controller in this truck has been kind of acting a little funny. It's been flashing, and then when you actually like, you know, apply the brakes, it all flashes. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, it seems like the trailer brakes are working fine, so we're just gonna wing it. But we got the guys up at the guest house, they're hand digging a couple portions of the footing for the new backyard wall it's gonna be getting put in. We're gonna take this truck and trailer combo now to go pick up some rebar. That way we can get all the rebar tied in the footing. And then in this video, but tomorrow, the new flooring's gonna be getting put into the guest house. So I'm super, super stoked to like knock out these big chunks of steps here. We always gotta, uh, you know, say a little prayer when we're towing with the gray truck here. Good news is that wall's not very big up there, so we're not getting a ton of rebar today. I think the old crew cab will do all right. So we made it to our friends over at RCP Block and Brick, um, and we're actually here for a couple of reasons. One, we're gonna be starting a job here, demoing out a bunch of concrete for them, and doing like a big display area for all of their new product. And two, we're picking up rebar while we're here. I've said it in previous videos, and I'll say it again, RCP has some of the cleanest trucks, including their truck and transfers, which you can see right there. They're about to transfer that dump box into the truck, and then they use the hydraulics on the truck to actually dump the second dump box, which is on the trailer. I know it's a common setup, but it's always cool to watch. <laughs> See if you grab 50 by feel. That's 50? Oh. Take it or leave it, which one? Pay for it, 50? That ain't 50. No? No, that ain't 50. I'm going the under on the over under. A hat. All right, I'll bet you a hat right now. <laughs> but that's not 50. I'll even let you go. If you're more, I'll give you the hat, but I think you're less. That's 50 right there? Dang. <laughs> 15 over? Alright. Good deal. <laughs> Look at that trick right there. That's how you know Jordan's been in the yard for what we got, 22 years? What's that? How many, how many years have we been out here? 17. 17 years? Yeah. That was a close guess. Alright, getting them all nice and bunched up there. Looking good, looking good. Getting them on the end of the forks. So hopefully we can center it on the trailer. But we gotta make a quick pit stop here for fuel. We got a rebar strap down there. Let's see, we are paying uh, $4.81 a gallon and it looks like you know, some people taking care of this old pump here with some stickers. Well, we made it back to the old ranch here. Um, Emma and Poppy hand dug um, the little portions that are going to tie into the house here. That way I'm not reaching over this fence, tearing up this fence, hitting the house, whatever it may be. We hand dug outs there. We're going to jump in the Mini X right now. We're going to dig this whole stretch as well as the longer stretch on like the actual back half of the house.
And just like that, guys, we have the footings all dug here for the new walls to go in. To give you guys a little perspective there. It's not gonna be a giant backyard. I don't want it to be a giant backyard, it's the rental. The bigger the backyard, the bigger crap we gotta maintain with inside the backyard, so. I think it's just enough of a backyard to give you a full-size backyard. Um, but my main thing was, you know, we're gonna have the three to four foot walls here with the wrought iron on top because it's gonna maintain that beautiful view that you have back there. And of course, like clockwork, the inspector has shown up to check out the footings. How do they look? Oh, he's on a mission right now. I don't know where he's going, but it's a goat on a mission. Inspector? Inspector, see? Inspector. Oh, oh, well, now he's caving in the footings. Well, does it look good? Does it look good, buddy? We good? Man, is it nice having lights in the guest house, though? This is super rad. So, kind of what I'm talking about view wise and not wanting to block is if we just build like a six foot block wall out there, it's going to go to probably about I don't know, height-wise, eye-wise, probably there. And it blocks a lot of your view. So instead we're gonna go three to four foot with the wrought iron on top. It's enough for any dogs or anything in this side of the yard to not really be able to negatively interact with the animals, but still allow you to like, as a person, positively react to the animals. If they wanna come up, you wanna feed them or whatever it may be. Plus you retain the beautiful view out of this side of the house. So you essentially, you know, if we had a window back there, you would have 360 degree views out of the guest house. I mean, um, guys are done for the day. It's Friday, I don't know what time this video is gonna go live, so they'll be back Monday. We'll start getting all the rebar, um, the forms and all that set up in the footings, but right now, I gotta do some last minute prep because the flooring guys are gonna be here first thing in the morning, and I have not finished painting the bathroom. Um, so, I'm gonna jump in here real quick, get this painting knocked out, because it's much easier to do it right now than after the flooring is in. And let's give the old snap trick a try here. You ready? I mean, Probably would have been much more dramatic if the color wasn't um, that close to looking white, especially in that light, but all right, bathroom is all painted and it's always like the little things that you think are gonna be super quick that almost kill you. So I definitely did fall off the ladder while I was in there. Um, luckily I landed on my feet, but totally covered in paint at this point for the smallest little bathroom, but hey, bathroom's painted. And it's a good thing I did it before the floors went in because I uh, definitely spilt my share of paint when I fell off the ladder. First thing in the morning, flooring guys will be here. Let's check in then. Now, while the flooring guys are at the house, um, they also said they would do all of the baseboards for me. Typically, I like to pre-paint my baseboards before I install them, but since there's two guys there, that's better than you know one rhino doing it. So we're gonna install it all today, hopefully, and then uh, I guess we'll paint it after it's installed. It's much more of a pain in the butt to paint it after it's installed, but you know, in the essence of keeping things moving, this is how we're gonna do it. So I personally like big, nice, just squared off baseboard, nothing too crazy. So we got five and a half inch baseboard, which is kind of huge for a guest house, but I think it's gonna look pretty rad. Also picked up a toilet while we're here. We got all the door casings. We got the bumpers for the closet. So should be a pretty productive day. So we should have unloaded the rebar yesterday and I could have took the trailer down here. I hate hauling 60 foot pieces of trim. Um, I mean, great thing about a crew cab long bed is you can haul them without a trailer, but then you gotta sit here with them in the cab. Now I created this really sweet shock absorber here thanks to this water bottle, which for you guys that wonder why I always leave water bottles in the trucks, because you never know when you need a good shock absorber right there to keep the uh, baseboards from flapping like crazy, but got a long drive home. You get smacked in the face by these bad boys. So we had to upgrade. Single shock wasn't working. We had to upgrade to a dual shock. Um, these are adjustable rate. It's more of an air shock than an oil-filled shock. We definitely need to, uh, I think we ran like full oil-filled shocks. 
would be good, probably with a reservoir. Um, we could probably dial this setup in, but it's actually working pretty good here to take a lot of the sprawling out of the baseboards. Chris, can we talk about how rad the floors look right now? Did we do a good job? I think you made a good pick, buddy. Yo, you picked this? Well, duh. <laughs> Dude, these floors turned out absolutely awesome. When we saw them in the showroom, they looked a lot browner. And I don't know how they're showing up on camera, but being next to the gray walls, the white trim and everything, it looks freaking awesome. Um, so the guys are running around throwing all the baseboards in. I'm running ahead of them, putting the door casings in. And uh, you'll see there's a lot of issues with like the walls in here. We all know kind of when this place is getting built. A lot of the existing walls had some weird stuff going on. One of which, um, like this bathroom wall here, has a really big bow in the center on both sides. About right there. So... You can see the difference right there. I mean, that's like a solid, oof, I don't even know. That's bigger than a quarter right there that we're kind of going to have to float. And consequently, on the other side, the wall did the same thing. It was a quarter, not quite a quarter out, but you can see it kind of came out a little bit. So you float the difference, you know, we'll caulk that seam. And you really aren't ever going to see it, but that's why I wanted to go ahead and do the doors. I knew there was a lot of funky stuff that needed to happen to get these doors to kind of halfway look right with the door casing, but everything is looking freaking awesome so far. These guys are doing a great job. y'all everything is essentially done come take a look inside the guest house looks really good in here it actually makes this place feel a lot bigger i'm glad we went with the five and a half on the baseboard especially considering the ceilings are so tall it's just such a grander look to go with a nice big baseboard there as opposed to something skinny and small we did end up running a little bit short on the baseboard for the bathroom over there so i'll have to do that a little bit later but it was nice to have those two guys run around and put in all the baseboard and caulk it as they went. Otherwise, that was something I was going to have to do by myself. I ended up putting baseboard in this little nook right here, which there's going to be cabinets there. So I guess I didn't really tell them that. So that's kind of the bathroom baseboard right there ended up in that nook. But no worries. Um, everything's looking good. All the door casings are on. Unfortunately, now this means I get to go around and caulk all the casings. And then we got to paint all the casings. We got to paint all the baseboards. We look pretty good though. I'm just gonna give you guys a little, little slow turn here. Slow turn, check out how nice this place looks now. Model up, Chris. You're a great model. Thanks. Fancy. Ooh, we, what are we getting, like $5,000 a month on rent? I mean, we could probably charge that out here. That's some good estimating right there. What did you fucking get? Yeah, so ended up with five, six extra pieces of flooring there. We're gonna obviously keep that. I know I mentioned in the previous videos that I'm not a fan of flooring running underneath cabinets. I'm still not a fan of that, but I figured these guys are already here. Instead of just like trying to stair step it so we could piece it in later once the cabinets are in, we'll just run it underneath. And I guess at this point, if we ever have to swap it, we'll just have to cut it out around the cabinets. And that's my main reason I don't like going underneath cabinets is if you ever want to swap your flooring, you're kind of screwed and you're sitting there trimming around the cabinets. And being that this is a rental, there's a high probability the flooring is going to get swapped out. Hopefully not frequently, but you kind of got to plan for that type of thing. All right, y'all, we are officially on trip number eight. I mean, technically seven-ish, but we had to go to a different Home Depot because first Home Depot we went to today didn't have everything, but I'm trying to get all the last little bits and pieces here. All this little crap is where stuff gets stupid expensive. So, we've got the new bathroom vanity, bathroom mirror, we got all the door handles for all the doors, we got the shower, towel hooks, 
toilet paper holders faucet it's all the plumbing crap to get all the whole vanity set up and so the last home depot we picked up the mirrored closet doors which these things worry me they got a long trip out to the ranch down a very bumpy road and mirrored closet doors are kind of flimsy so hopefully we don't end up with a bunch of broken glass in there because they were not cheap either for how cheaply they are made i had to shove some stuff in there to hopefully protect these things everything strapped down wish me luck we will see what happens so my goal for the rest of the day and the rest of this video is to essentially get this bathroom about as finished as i can get it i'm no plumber i absolutely hate doing plumbing we're going to be tackling some plumbing today we're going to be putting on some angle stops i've never successfully put on an angle stop that didn't leak in the first like three or four tries Granted, I haven't tried that many times. I know my strengths and my weaknesses, and I know when it's time to hire somebody better than me. But since we're so far out here, and I just wanna get this done, I'm gonna go ahead and try and tackle that. I've never used shark bite fittings. I normally use just like the regular um, angle stop, so I'm gonna give those a shot. Maybe they'll make my life easier. I know it's love or hate with certain people when it comes to fittings like that, but whatever, we'll get into that in a minute. First things first though, we gotta get the old uh, baseboards finished in here. Good news is though, I got a new head mount here for the old GoPro, so we'll be able to go back to there. So let's get our measurements here, and I'm gonna apologize for it being loud. The exhaust fan's kinda loud there. Let's go for piece number two. And hopefully, it uh, looks like we're gonna clear the angle stop here. Now, I know when we were doing the drywall in here, I talked about having these bull nose corners. It's basically where the corner is radius as opposed to a squared off corner. And a couple of you guys said, uh, you know, this is a luxury option in uh, whatever city or state that you're in. Out here, it's definitely not a luxury option. In fact, squared corners with smooth drywall is more of a luxury option. Here's one of the other reasons I hate this, and that is when you come to uh, do baseboards and you're making a corner. Uh, now, they do make rounded corners out of base but that's very dependent on the style of base you're going with and if they have it in stock there was none for this um, that i could find so what we typically do is we'll cut these little angle pieces and these are just 22 and a half degree angles not 45s like you would make in a 90 degree corner 22 and a half degrees there which means that cut's gotta be 22 and a half degrees, that cut's gotta be 22 and a half degrees, and that's how you'll feather around that 90 degree corner, which when you're done, looks something like this. Now there's probably people out there that don't prefer that look, but just please, whatever you do, don't like 45 your corner there, now granted this is a 22 and a half degree cut, and then just fill that big void right there with caulking. I've seen it done a lot. It looks kind of tacky. Now, for most of you that have done this before or who ever do this, um, it's obviously no news to you, but for those of you guys that have never tried this stuff for yourselves, there are preset markings for this reason on these saws because you are not, in fact, the first person to try and figure out a 22 five degree angle. And it's so common that they actually denote it right there on the saw, um, on your angle, as well as on your flop of the saw, which would be right there. You'll see they also have the same markings 22.5. But I've got all my pieces pre-cut here, just kind of set in place. I'm gonna run around now, nail all these in. I'm gonna leave the vanity side out because I wanna put the vanity in first and then come up on either side of it with the base. That way there's not a gap between the vanity and the wall because the baseboard is pushing it out. All right, while the baseboard is shot onto the wall, everything is caulked already. The part I'm not looking forward to, let's play pretend plumber here and see if we can get this dialed in without flooding our new house. So I've got my bag o plumbing parts here. Got me a bucket to catch any dripping water once we cut these bad boys open. And obviously these are coated in drywall texture, primer, paint. So we're gonna need to uh, clean that a copper line up a little bit here, but obviously we got our supply lines. We got our two cutter. We got some sandpaper, beauty rings, and then our shark bite angle stops. Now again, before we go into this, not a plumber, hate doing plumbing, have maybe put on like three angle stops in my life and fought every single one of them. I'm gonna cut these a little further off the wall than most people probably would. Reason being, if I completely screw all this up and we need to solder onto the pipe, we have some room to do so. So we're gonna go probably about right there. I don't know why, but that feels right. There we go, get our cutter on there. There we go, oh, we got some water. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Yes, I know Milwaukee makes 12 volt versions of this, of these cutters, but I'd rather not have to do these if I don't have to. All right, now we'll get us a little bit of sandpaper here, the sweet dispenser. 
Shouldn't have to do too much here. It's just a little bit of paint, some drywall mud. All right, let's see if we can figure out this little shark bite technology here. I mean, it literally says you just push it on. I've seen it where you take this ring off first, put that on there, and then you push it on and bring the ring on. Not 100% sure, which, and if I'm correct, we literally line that booger up, get, get that little plastic piece inside the copper. Supposedly we just push it. I have no idea if that's good or not. I mean, it seems to, to move a lot. I feel like that's not that good. Maybe shark bites just move. That can't be right. It's gotta be a tighter fit than that. Only problem is there's a little bit of slack in the pipe, so I don't wanna push too hard and destroy something inside the wall there. So I might grab some channel locks, try and grab that and push and see what happens. It definitely went on more. I'm gonna leave this ring off on the other side. It's obviously the wrong size anyway. Um, and it's kind of getting in the way of me being able to get a better bite on there for the channel locks. See? All right, let's try this again. This trim ring we can put on later. Let's grab these boogers. Try to not crush our pipe. I don't know. I mean, that feels all the way on to me. I guess shark bites. Just spin. Put our trim ring on for whatever reason they have a trim ring. I mean, they feel like they're all the way on. So here's to hoping. I'm gonna hook up supply lines right now just so I can direct the downforce of water into this bucket should these all of a sudden just start leaking like crazy. But I'm gonna crack both of these valves as well as the spigot outside. That way all the pressure doesn't just hammer on these fittings and Fingers crossed that this doesn't just flood our whole new bathroom here. Because the water shut off to this house is kind of far from the house. So we're going to turn it on. We're going to sprint up here. And then we're just going to watch it. And hopefully at that point, like I said, nothing bad has happened. All righty, here goes nothing. Kind of gentle with it. Okay, go, 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 go. Oh, jeez. All right, well, we got a lot of pressure coming out of them. Shut that off, shut that off. Feel around them. I don't feel any water. That's more than I could say for any standard compression fitting uh, angle stop I've ever used. Now, will these blow off in the middle of the night? I don't know, maybe. Well, next step, let's get this vanity set in place here. That way we know how to build our P-trap and our drain line. Went to two Home Depots. Every single vanity top of the first Home Depot that we went to, the entire countertop and sink was cracked. And they were all like, decent condition boxes so make sure if you guys are buying these from home depot open the box before you leave because every single one at one home depot were broken just take a drawer to the face all right let's take this booger inside everything looks halfway decent on it these things ain't the nicest things in the world but for a rental they're ideal. Squeeze her through our 24 inch door here. Oh, look at that guys. That's a heck of an upgrade from the pedestal sink that was in here. Weirdly facing the window with this tiny little corner shelf that was right here. Now I'm gonna attach these to the wall just using uh, two, three inch screws here. Again, you guys are probably sick of seeing this trick on the channel, but using my magnet here to find where my studs are. So we know there's a stud right there because the drywall screw should be in the stud and the hole in the magnet centers it up with the center of the drywall screw. Huh. Couldn't get that lucky. All right, we're gonna call that good enough <laughs> while I go charge this battery. Now, I do have all the parts here to build my P-trap and my drain assembly. So we got a 45. We're basically gonna come 45 off the way the pipe comes out of the wall there. Make our little P-trap like so. Countertop on here. There we go. All right, looking pretty good. Now, before I liquid nails the old countertop here onto the actual cabinet itself, 
I like to be able to put faucets and stuff on without having to hang out underneath the sink. So I'm gonna actually slide this back, install everything from above here, and then we'll go liquid nails it all in place and uh, be good to go. Well, this is the faucet that we've got. Nothing special here. 100% tested for quality. Now, traditionally, I put plumber's putty on everything, like I would plumber's putty underneath the seal, as well as for the drain. But I was reading the instructions in here and it says, do not use plumber's putty around there because you may damage the seal. So, so I guess we're not using plumber's putty on this thing. Do not use plumber's putty. Oh, okay, there you go. So again, I'm gonna pretty much assemble this thing from up here. That way we're not having to crawl up underneath this tiny little vanity cabinet. Make sure we look nice and squared up. Looks good. All right, so I've got my tube of liquid nails here. No need to go too crazy with it. This thing's not gonna move. We're gonna set her in place for good here. After I just get my fingers in all that liquid nails. Get her nice and centered up with our little reveal on the edge there and our overhang. Shift it that way just a little bit. All right, y'all. She is permanently attached. Let's get our drain put in here. And this will give us a better idea of how we're gonna route our ABS down below. Like a soap. Okay. All right, let's get this assembled from underneath. This is probably a great angle for you guys to see a whole lot of nothing going on down there. All righty, I think we're gonna be good. We'll make a little riser right there out of that booger. Splice in a little piece there, make our riser here, and call it good. Now, while I don't have the Milwaukee uh, copper cutter, I do have the Milwaukee PVC cutter. So we're gonna use this to cut our ABS to make our lines there. Found a good use for some directions. Make sure we don't spill any of this. A little cement here. Oh, she messy, she is messy. Next piece to the puzzle. All right, you stay there. Get the lower half of our P-trap here assembled. Get on there, booger. And we are pretty much ready to assemble here. So slide that up in there. Well, it might not be the nicest plumbing in the world, but I don't think we did half bad here. And it's time for the moment of truth. Let's turn these on and see if everything you know, works, nothing leaks. We're gonna slowly turn the angle stops on. Let's give us a little test here on the sink. Okay, 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 I'm liking it. Liking what I'm seeing. Let's check our P-trap down here. Everything's good, nothing's leaking. Oh, we found a leak. We found a leak. I don't think I've ever done plumbing without one leak. It's just at this coupling right here of the P-trap. I think I need to tighten her down just a little bit more. So let's do that before we uh, flood this place. All right, a couple more cranks in. She is nice and tightened down. No more leaks. Everything's looking good. Faucet's running great. Big step right there. Checked off the old bucket list. If I don't miss the door. Look at that. Look at that. So I got to put the mirror up. I got to put the toilet in. I had hoped I was going to finish the bathroom in this video. But unfortunately, I actually got to upload this video like right now. So you guys have a video for today. So this is like one of the few times you're seeing this right now, and this is actually the same day the video is going live. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you stay tuned, click subscribe, and check out future videos on watching the guest house come to completion. We are very, very close. Uh, the guys are actually outside right now working on the walls for the backyard, so I'll give you an update on all of that in the next video. And again, a huge thank you to you guys that have been following along this far. This place has made quite a transformation, and I'm very excited to see this thing once it is all done. Do me a favor, though. Go check out WorkForApparel.com. If you guys don't know what Work for Apparel is, it's my clothing company dedicated to restoring pride in blue-collar work, and all those that are out there busting their butts every day working with their hands to actually make this world continue to turn. So I'd be honored if you guys would go check out the website. But other than that, catch you in the next video. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.